So if I start messing up this morning and doing crazy things, it, I'm going to show you how to do something. Okay? So this morning I was trying to be nice and safe for all of y'all. So Kurt has got a big bottle of hand sanitizer. <laughs> okay? For y'all that don't know what this is, this is candle oil. <laughs> to the virus and so we keep them in our prayers is uh, hope that doesn't turn out uh, uh, positive for them uh, by the way every time I say positive and negative I keep thinking about I my brother uh, asked texted me and said are you negative now and I said yeah I can tell I'm negative because I don't like what you're wearing <laughs> oh you mean that kind of negative so anyway. uh, Evelyn Hersick is is continuing her cancer treatment, so keep her in your prayers. And Amon Herzig has had a lot of trouble with uh, congestive heart failure. They did a bunch of tests this week, and it looks like he's going to be able to control it with medication, but he's kind of right there on the border, so y'all keep him in your prayers as he continues to do that. Uh, Ronnie Pittman had some uh, cancer on the ear taken off, so keep him in your prayers as he recovers. Gloria Kane is going in for stents in her heart on Tuesday, so keep her in your prayers. Uh, we always remember Carolyn as she's continuing to recover. And Tom is back with us this morning. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and Doris. Uh, keep Doris in your prayers. She had a really good day this week. So we <coughs> celebrate that. Also in our community, Jennifer McCoskey, the, our funeral for her mom, Carol, will take place today. Uh, we've been asked to pray for Richard Garza and Julia and Sylvan Kovar. Those are folks that are related to folks in our congregation, so remember all of those. Are there any others that you want us to pray for? Any other concerns? Any other celebrations? I know, I have a celebration. I have a celebration too. Yeah, probably the same one. Is it? What? Well, you know that case, it. In that case, we have a celebration this week. Uh, Arlene Marshall's birthday, and she wasn't even about to tell me I was she was. So, so anytime you fix to be at somewhere close to 90, I'm going to sing happy birthday for you. <laughs> so, so we're going to sing Arlene the birthday this morning. So if you're all ready, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Arlene. Happy birthday. Y'all would now we will get on with the service. <laughs> Y'all rise in our first hymn is number 360. <laughs>
found in your bulletin. We have been called the salt of the earth. We have been called the light of the world. We have been called a city set on a hill. Let us like Jerusalem lift our gates, lift our hearts, lift our voices in the worship of God, the sovereign of hosts, and the Savior of the humble. Pray with me. Lord, we're so glad that we can worship. We thank you for this time that we spend with you, surrounded by people who love you as well. And we pray that your spirit might come down in a mighty way and open our hearts. Give us exactly what you know we need this day. Touch us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children to come forward for a children's message. You can stay right there. You can stay right there if you want to. I'm, we're going to be talking today about some stuff that it's pretty heavy. But I mean, here's the best way I can explain it. You have any idea what this is? It's it's a it's a big ship that goes way down in the ocean. It's called a bathyscaphe or a bathosphere. It's made out of metal. It's about this thick. You know, you feel that? Ooh, really heavy. Uh, the reason that is is because do you know how heavy water is? Have you ever picked up a gallon of water? A jug of water? It, it, water's heavy. Can you imagine when you go like this? If you ever swim down to the bottom of your swimming pool, do your ears ever start going, oh, ouch. And that's just a few feet of water. There are fish, and I got some, brought some pictures of them, like this. Isn't that a, that's called a fang fish. And it lives about 16,000 feet down in the sea. That's way down there. It's so far down there that the pressure is about 500 times what it is up here. We're going, wow. And here's, here's another fish. Uh, this is called a hadled snail fish. It's a funny looking fish, isn't it? But look. They live 15,000 feet down. They live five miles deep. And the pressure is 15,000 pounds per square inch. That doesn't mean anything to you, but can you imagine an elephant, an elephant standing on your thumb? That would be like that, 15,000 pounds per square inch. That's you. What would you, how do those fish live down there with all that pressure? Do they have skin like this? It doesn't look like it, does it look like it's slimy and they look like they're like the normal fish. The reason that they can do that is they have some internal pressure. They have something in their body that pushes back as much as the water is pushing in. Now, the reason I told you about all this crazy stuff is because we have the same problem. We have things that press in on us. Can you think of a few things that press on you and make you go, ouch? And that maybe not physical things, but maybe like, have you ever had somebody call you bad names? Never have. Well, good. I hope you never do. Uh, if you ever had uh, your mom tell you you got to clean your room and do your chores and get all your stuff picked up, and you and you go, oh man. Every time. Uh, this happens all the time. Yeah. Life is full of pressures, and you'll find that the older you get, the more pressures that you, your job is going to be putting pressure on you, and your the people around you are going to put pressure on you. Your friends will put pressure and. and Either you got to get skin that's this thick, and just just like ah. And there's some people that do that. They just get mean and irritable and don't bother me and leave me alone. And if you talk to them, they snap at you. And you'll probably run into some people like that. And you go, oh, I think I know why they're that way. They're feeling lots of pressure and they're being mean back. But there are other people who can throw this stuff away. Say, I don't need that. How do you, how do they do that? How do they deal with the pressure? They got something inside of them that, that, that pushes back and makes them feel so that they don't feel the pressure. Do you know what that is? you have any idea? Jesus, our God, 
when the God's Spirit fills us, we're going to be talking about some people in Scripture today who has, that I want to let the Spirit fill me and overflow into me so that i got pressure on the inside. It pushes just back as hard as the people on the outside are pushing in. And that way, I don't need thick skin. I don't, all i got to do is just depend on God to take care of me. And that's what we try to do as Christians, just say, Lord, fill me. Fill me to overflow and so I can deal with all the pressures that are around me. So I don't have to look like that. Or like that thing fish. I can be beautiful and beautiful to the people around me. I can even serve and help the people around me with joy because I don't feel the pains anymore. That's really good news. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you've promised to come and fill us and give us the ability to serve and love and care for the people that are around us. We pray that you'll fill us this day. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your attention. Can you, you want to take those back to your pew with you? You can put them somewhere, anywhere you like. Put them up there against the pool. That's great. Thank you. They're not as heavy as it looks. Can you imagine if your arms were made out of that?
This statement is true and can be completely trusted that Jesus Christ entered the world to forgive sins. If you have confessed honestly your sins this day, the good news is your sins have been forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us profess our, profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Today's lesson is taken from the book of Corinthians. It is the ninth chapter beginning with the 16th verse. I have no right to boast just because I preach the gospel. After all, I am under orders to do so. And how terrible it would be for me if I did not preach the gospel. If I did my work as a matter of free choice, then I could expect to be paid. But I do it as a matter of duty, because God has entrusted me with this task. What pay do I get then? It is the privilege of preaching the good news without charging for it, without claiming my right in my work and for the gospel. I am a free man, nobody's slave, but I make myself everybody's slave in order to win as many people as possible. While working with the Jews, I live like a Jew in order to win them. And even though I myself am not subject to the laws of Moses, I live as though I, w I was working with them in order to win them. In the same way when working with Gentiles, I live like a Gentile outside the Jewish law in order to win Gentiles. This does not mean that I don't obey God's law. I am really under Christ's law. Among the weak in faith, I become weak like one of them in order to win them. So I become all things to all people, that I may save some of them by whatever means are possible. All this I do for the gospel's sake, in order to share in its blessings. May God add his blessings to this, the reading of his holy word for us. Amen. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for being present with us in a mighty way. Thank you for inviting us into your kingdom and giving us orders to follow your will and way because they bring us life. We pray that now as we meditate upon the words of Scripture that you might let your spirit descend upon us in a way that really will open our hearts, really will touch our minds. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be good in your sight. Make that possible by the movement of your precious Holy Spirit. You, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The text today is a text from uh, Corinthians where the Apostle Paul has gone on this mission trip and started churches all over, and the church in Corinth was one of those churches. But apparently some of the folks in the church are saying, wait a minute. What are you coming back here meddling in, the, in our church's business for? He, didn't, he could have said, well, I started the church. I ought to be blessed. He didn't say that. Uh, he could have said, well, you know, y'all are paying me to do this, and that's my job. He didn't say that. He said, none of that really matters much. But I am under obligation to Christ. I kind of made it, Christ made a deal with me a long time ago and put me under order saying, preach the good news. That, and that's why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. Well, all that I'm doing is just because I want you to be in Christ's will and way. I want you to understand what life comes from doing it Christ's way. Uh, 
the lectionary, I don't hope you figured this out by now, is that every time you have those lectionary readings, they all kind of pull together in the same kind of theme. So if you read from the Gospel reading this morning, you read from the Gospel of Mark. And it's Jesus, uh, early in the Gospel of Mark, going to the house of Simon. His mother-in-law was sick. And he goes in and touches her hand, and the fever leaves her, and she immediately gets up and begins to serve them. And then he goes out into the streets, and everybody's clamoring, saying, well, heal me, heal me. And Jesus heals and heals and heals. And he goes home that night and gets a, a, a decent night's rest, but early the next morning before he knows people are going to show up at the house and start begging again, he goes off to a quiet place to just, just have some peace, some quiet time with God. Has a good old sermon right there by itself about the need for quiet time. But he can't stay there long because the disciples get up and they can't find Jesus. Where's Jesus? And they start looking for him. And they finally would say, where, where have you been? Everybody's looking for you. But can, if that were me, I'd probably say, can you just give me a break? But Jesus doesn't immediately. He, he returns with them. And he, they want him to go back to the house and heal all those people that are knocking at the door. He said, i got lots of people to heal and lots of gospel to preach. We're going to go on down the road and we're going to continue doing this. As if though he had a tireless source of energy that enabled him to continue to do his Father's will. Uh, the Old Testament lesson is a lesson you know well. It's uh, the, the uh, text from Isaiah 40 that says, uh, Those who wait upon the Lord, they will have their strength renewed and they will rise up like on eagles' wings. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not faint. Uh, all three of those texts are talking about something uh, that, that fills us, that gives us the ability to be who God wanted us to be. And all three of those texts talk about the special uh, feeling that we receive when we get outside of ourselves. I don't know what that means a whole lot to you. That's all I'm going to tell you some stories that I know. Uh, Marcif Sharif is a uh, columnist in the Houston Chronicle. I read her, her articles a lot. Uh, she is a yoga instructor and a personal meditation instructor. So she's got all kind of insights about that. Uh, but she was saying, you know what most of us tend to do? Me, 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 my problems, my looks, what, what people are thinking of me, my issues. We're kind of the center of the universe when it comes to the way we look at things. Me, 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 me. Reminds me of a Toby Keith song. Yeah. Oh, I want to, you, 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 I want to talk about me. I'm talking about mine. I'm going to take my, 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 oh my, what I think, what I like, what I want, what I do, uh, know, what I see. I like talking about you, 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 usually, but occasionally I want to talk about me. Well, the truth is, we like talking about me most of the time. Have you figured that out yet? I mean, probably you figured that out. You want to make somebody really happy? You want to make friends easily? Talk about them. Talk about issues that are going on. Oh, yeah, people love to talk about themselves. And usually we do, too. And usually when it comes to the way we look at things, what we want from God in our lives Come fix the problems that I got. Give me the issue. Take care of the issues that I'm dealing with. And, and these, these three scriptures seem to point us in another direction. They seem to say, get outside of yourself. You really want to be uh, filled with something good? Then don't fill it with yourself. Get outside of yourself and start serving others. And you're going to find some of the richest stuff of life. Um, I don't know if you've ever taken on a project or uh, felt called to do something. Maybe it's teaching a Sunday school class. Maybe it's taking care of youngsters. Maybe it's a, a bread program for the people in need. Uh, the people that do that often do that, well, not because of their own free choosing, but, you know, somebody asked me to do it. I've heard tons of stories about, well, the preacher made me teach the Sunday school class. I didn't want to do it. Didn't think I could do it. And then they go later, they go, wow, that was something I didn't expect such life, such joy to come out of that. Uh, the commercial on TV, I, I always see it when we're watching the rocket show, I hope you've seen it, where the guy with the deep voice says, there's a Western philosopher that says, the purpose of life is to help others, help others get through it. 
I was curious what Western philosopher might have said that. And so uh, I Googled it. What, who, who said that? Purpose of life is in helping others. Well, take your pick. Uh, here is Ralph Waldo Emerson. The purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate. It's to, uh, it can make the difference in how well you've lived and how well you love. Uh, Diary of Anne Frank. No one has ever become poor by giving. Or maybe it's Charles Dickens. No one is useless in this world who lightens the burdens of another. Or John Holmes, who said there is no excuse better for the heart than reaching down and lifting people up. There's no exercise for the heart that's better than reaching down and lifting up. Or Maya Angelou, who said, when we give cheerfully and accept gratefully, everyone is blessed. There was a long list of people who seem to have gotten it, people who think deeply, who finally see a little more clearly and say, you know, I find real life when I get outside of me and start doing something for others. And I think that's exactly what Paul was saying today. He said, if I was doing this because of me, I'd probably tell you a few things you didn't want to hear, but I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for the gospel. So I'm telling you what Christ has engaged me in doing. He's given me orders. And I'm just following orders. And I'm here serving you because he commanded me to do that. Uh, that's, that's an inspiration for us to say, well, it worked for Paul. And maybe that's what it is that works for us. Uh, the purpose of life is really to get outside of ourselves and help others. Uh, I just want you to wrestle with that a little bit today. Uh, I want you to think about the times when you're able to serve, when you've been called upon to serve, when you can get outside of yourself and do something for others and say, aren't those the times that bring me the richest joy? Uh, like the uh, children's sermon today, I think that catches it as well as I can catch it. Uh, we need to be filled with something that gives us uh, in, inside the ability to press back on all the things that the world presses on us. And God said, I'll do that for you. I'll fill you to overflowing. And you just got to make room for me to get in there, and you got to get out of there for me to do that. Uh, the, all the, look at all of the uh, heroes of the faith. They're the people who said, fill me, Lord. You take over. You fill me to overflowing, and I'll know life abundant. My prayer for you this day is that you can do exactly that. Find a source of strength that's way better than the source of strength we try to offer for ourselves. Would you pray with me? Lord, this is the season of light. Epiphany. And we thank you for the light that you continue to shed upon our lives. And the the twinkle of lights that come on when we finally realize that your truth is so true. So we pray, O oh Lord, this day that we can see and experience and feel and really hear way down deep in our souls your words of life. We pray for our loved ones, all the folks that we have named, Jay and Linda and Reuben, Wayne, Amel, Evelyn, Ronnie and Gloria, and Carolyn, and Tom, Doris, Jennifer and Richard, Julia and Sylvan. We pray for your healing touch to be upon them and your guidance to be with them in, a, in an amazing way that will bring healing and life. But there's so many others that we would pray for as well. And you know the individual prayers of our hearts. We pray, O oh Lord, that your blessings reach out to each of them. We pray for our community and for the leaders of our community that you'll give them guidance and strength to be faithful to your will and way. We pray particularly for the Weimar community and the loss of Doug Johnson. We pray for our teachers, and our health care workers, and all those people that are so precious to us in so many ways. Give them strength, amazing strength during this time of need. We pray for our world and for the tensions that are felt all around the world now, for people who are engaged in anger and frustration, hurts, 
that are too deep for us to understand. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will continue to make us disciples of your will and way and help us know a way that we can reach out and be your example of faith to a hungry world. For some reason, you put faith in us. Help us see that we are worthy of that faith. For some reason, you continue to offer us your strength and your joy. We pray, O oh Lord, that we might be open enough to receive it. Hear all these prayers of our hearts and hear the deepest prayers of our hearts as we pray silently now. Hear our prayers. says, come to my table. If we have a spiritual thirst, the table of the Lord holds satisfaction. There is no other place as holy as the open table to which we are invited, so let us come in thanksgiving. Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Take this and eat it and do it in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood which is poured out for you so that all your sins might be forgiven. Take and drink this and do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember the presence of your Lord Jesus Christ. This is given for you. Prepare your hearts. Would you prepare your hearts with me now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you prepare to take communion this day, we're going to serve communion to you in the pew. I'm going to offer first anybody that wants those sanitized packets. It's all in one, bread and cup. Uh, you peel off the top little plastic thing and you get the, the wafer. Peel off the, the uh, foil part and you get to the cup. So if you'd like one of those, take that from me, but also right behind me with the uh, ushers, we'll be bringing the traditional bread. We'll take that together, and then we'll pass out the cup, and 
we'll take that together. This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Take and eat this and do this in remembrance of him. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ poured out for you so that all your sins might be forgiven. Take and drink this in remembrance of him. Join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. All honor, glory, and praise to you, creator King. May our lives be one of gratitude as we are thankful always for your grace and mercy. As we are nourished, we are made strong for the work and the service of your kingdom. Um, I close the hymn as a hymn of joy, hymn number 561. Five. 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 One of the other four or five.
provided cookies for us on the church grounds. Look forward to the time we can get back in the fellowship hall for uh, fellowship and a meal together. But you can look for cookies, and I'll make you coffee if you ask. Bring your coffee out. But uh, as you prepare to go out, one more story. Uh, there was a man and his son walking along the road, and he was about your size, I guess. The little, little guy looked up at his dad and said, you think I can move that rock over there and get it off the road? And his dad said, I think you can do it, but it's a pretty big rock. So the little boy went over there and he started to him like, good. He said, use all your strength. This is going to be even harder than he did even budge the rock. And he said, Dad, I can't do it. And his dad said, you haven't used all your strength yet. I have too. He said, no, you haven't called on me. I'll help you move it. And with that, they moved the rock easily off the road. That's pretty much exactly what our God says to us this day is, let me be with you. Let me be your strength. As you go forth this day, may you go forth with the knowledge that that God, that Lord, goes with you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and fill you with his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.